we already talked about Hoffman tree uh, before, but I'm just going to remind you about that. And uh, basically, with the ASCII code, we know that every single character needs uh, a byte to be stored. So if you have a book, and all you have to do is basically to calculate how many characters you have in that book and multiply that by 8, and you would figure out roughly how the capacity or the amount of space that you need to store a book in. Um, Halfman Tree basically will give us a way that we can um, compress text files into smaller uh, version. And the compression technique used with Hoffman, as I said before, it's what we call a loseless compression because you're not losing any data uh, compared to the losey compression technique. Now, um, what else should we, we know? Oh, Hoffman tree is basically is considered as one uh, as a technique of variable lengths. And variable lengths basically means every single character will have a different length uh, or di different number of bits to present it. For example, here with the ASCII code, we know every single character will need eight bits. But with Hoffman tree, no, that's not the case. Some characters will need more. Some characters will need less. Um, with that being said, I'm just going to go through the PowerPoint, and I have a Word document open also to demonstrate the concept. The idea. Let me just start with the first step with the implementation of Hoffman tree. If you have a textbook, or you have a sentence, or you have a phrase, for example, all you have to do is to measure the frequencies of each character. And by measuring the frequencies of each character, you need to find a way to tell me, for each character in that textbook, how many times that character has appeared. This here is just to show you an example of what we mean by that. For example, the letter, um, the space. Simple basically appeared 186. The letter R appeared 48. The letter Z appeared 1. The letter X appeared 1. So as you can see here, this is basically if you have a textbook, if you have a phrase, or if you have a page, what do you do basically? You go for each character in that, the alphabetic characters, and then you, you, you try to find out how many times each character appeared in that phrase. Um, well, let me just give you a tip here when it comes to the implementation for your side. Um, if you have a textbook open in Word document, just control F and type that character. It's going to tell you how many times you have that character there. If you have a... Why do I have to go far? Let me just open... Um, where is it? Here it is. This is the... Uh, you know, Casey. By the way, yesterday I watched a movie called The Platform on Netflix. Go watch it. I'm not going to say anything else. Anyway, let's go back here. If I press F, and here we go. In this page, we have 73 Fs. You can do the same thing with Word document or text file. Text file. So that's basically what you have to do. For example, how many spaces? No, yep, yeah, here. I do have 887 space. How many A do I have? A 300. How many E's do I have? A 570. How many Z's do I have? Z oh, wait a minute. I have 14. Let me go back to the PowerPoint. The whole, the bottom line of this is basically, you will notice that some characters will appear more frequently than other characters. Now, is it fair to give each one of them the same length? That's the question that the Hoffman tree is trying to solve. For example, let's look at the Z and let's look at the space that we have here in this, uh, in this uh, uh, slide here. If I can find a way to present the characters that appears less frequently with a long uh, code, and if I can represent the characters that appears more frequently with a less or a shorter code, that will give me a lot, or save, save sorry, a lot of space when it comes to implementation. Now, as I said before, just compare this number 186 with one. Now, if you go and you want to say, well, I'm just going to compress, I'm not going to compress, I'm just going to use the ASCII code. Well, you're going to basically need eight multiplied by uh, uh, 187. I'm talking about Z here in the space. But again, let's imagine I am going to use, let's say, 12 bits for Z and three bits for 
uh, for the space. Variable length, space remember, more frequency, shorter. That basically will save me a lot. So the idea here is basically is to build a tree, and you'll see the implementation is extremely easy, by the way. So the idea here, again, letters with more frequently appearing in a text file will be required, uh, will need just have to have a short or short, yeah, short version of the code uh, to present it in binary. Comparing to other characters would appear less frequently, they would be longer, and that's the key here. So let's go back here, let's go, uh, keep going, sorry, and have a look at this tree here. This here, as you can see, here's the Hoffman tree after the implementation for, let's say, a text file. Now, you are going to have to build this tree. And again, even though it looks a little, a little bit complicated, but you don't have to worry. And I just want you to look at, for example, uh, E, this letter E here. And I want you to have a look at Z here. Now, from a look at this table, if I tell you how do you present E in binary using Huffman tree that I have here, well, basically, you start from the root and you move to E, and as you move, you you look at those uh, the branches, and what are uh, the numbers at the top of those branches. So basically, E is basically zero one zero. That's E. If I ask you about I. Zero one one zero. Remember, uh, okay, sorry, just see how many times I'm talking about digits here. For E, for example, one, two, three. For I, one, two, three, four. For for example, N, one, two, three, four. And again, the code here is zero one zero, zero one one zero, zero one one one. Now compare that to Z, for example. One one zero 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 one zero one zero the length here is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten comparing to three do you see the difference here and of course we know e is going to be repeated way more than the z so that will save a lot of space now you may ask about how are those ones are coming and where are the where are those ones and zeros are coming from again i'm just going to tell you we're going to get to that point in a sec and i'm going to give you some tip here if you just pay attention here all the right branches they have what we call the weight of 1, and all the left branches have the weight of 0. So look at this here. This is 0, this is 1. This is 1, this is 0. This is 1, this is 0. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Do you see? This is 1, this is 0. This is 1, this is 0. So right side are 1s, left side are 0s. And again, we're going to talk about the implementation in a sec. So um, again, let's, let's get back here to the bottom of this, you basically will be given a text file and you'll be asked to encode the characters and after the encoding is going to be start, you're going to be asked to decode those characters. Again, using a help tree that you need to actually build. After building the tree, this is basically how it's going to look like. The first step of building the tree is basically to calculate the frequencies, sometimes they call them the weight, of each character. Now, I do have the weights of each character. How do I build this uh, Huffman tree? Well, the idea is very simple. All you need here, basically, is to have, um, let's say, a, a priority queue. Yes, a mini priority queue. Now, you guys remember the, mini, the priority queue? We talked about it before. And the priority queue, it's, if you just, just let me just remind you about that. The priority queue is basically a complete binary tree where the smallest value is at the root and all the values uh, under the root are greater than that value. And every time you move an element, you move the root and you replace it with the last element you have in that priority queue. And then after you do that implementation, you're just going to have to find out, uh, swap the values until you get the, the second smallest value in that root. So the idea here is, as I said before, and by the way, I'm going to try to post as much videos uh, in addition to this one later. So 
you will have a victor here. He said the input is going to be a victor of uh, objects. Each object basically contains the simple and um, uh, the weight or the frequency of it. So we have a victor that can contain objects. And each object could be considered as a pair or a structure that you can create. And each structure basically will have two elements. The letter, the character itself, and how many times that character appeared. After that, you're going to take that vector and you're going to build what we call uh, a priority queue. And I'm going to get to this analysis later, but I'm just giving you an idea here. You put in a priority queue. And uh, this is just for the analysis. I'm going to talk about that uh, in a sec. Let me just see here. Okay, he's just going through the analysis. Okay, uh, let me just get to the implementation and how does it work. Okay, let's go back here again. You do have a text file. You calculated the frequencies and you build a table of how many times each character appeared in that table. Now, it's very, very important to understand that you need to get that first step done. Simple. And, and, and frequency. Right after that, you're going to create a vector or an array of those objects, the frequency and, and, and the character. And now you're going to feed that vector into a mini, or again, mini heap. And after that, this is what you do. This is very, very important to understand. And I'm going to go straight to the implementation here. For example, let's look at this table here. I got B, C, D, A, E. And as simple as that, just those five characters. B appeared 13 times, C 22, D 32, A 64, and E 103. After you put that in, remember here, a mini heap, this is basically how it looks like, just like you can see here. The B is root with the smallest value, and you got C and D left and right child, and then you got the A and the E. Now, I don't care about the left child and right child, but it's a mini heap. Just use the mini heap implementation that we know. The idea here is you take the smallest value in this heap, and you take the second smallest value in this heap, and you take them out. So if this is the case, I am basically going to be moving B and C. You, you just move B just like we did with any mini heap, and then after that, C is going to replace it. Of course, it's not C. Just remember, E is going to jump from the last element and go here, but again, E is not in the right place, so the, the values are going to be rearranged until C will be replacing uh, the root. Right after that, you move C again. So you have two values. Do you, what are you going to do with those two values? Well, the idea is very simple. You're going to have a binary tree. A very simple binary tree. Now, with this binary tree, the root of this binary tree will not have a character, or will, the root of the binary tree will, will contain only the summation of both, remember this, frequencies. And it's not going to have any character. So basically what I'm doing here, let's just look here. I'm removing B and C, and here is B and C. I'm creating a binary tree. As you can see here, the root of this binary tree contain, and just remember, the summation of those two values. So as you can see here, for the frequency section of this heap, I could have 35, but for the character section, it's not a character anymore. It's basically this binary tree. Now, after that, we are going to do the same exact thing. We do have 32, 35, 64, and 103. We're going to move those two smallest values, which is in this case 32 and 35. So I will have D on one side, and I will have the 35, which has those two children on the other side. And as you can see here, this is it. D and 35, and I got B and I got C. And as you can see here, if you put the summation of those two roots, uh, those two frequencies, you will get 67, and 67 is going to hold, and it's going to be in this area, in this table. Now that I'm done with that, remember, we have to keep going the same way again. Take out the smallest two values, build a tree, 
and the root for that tree is going to be the summation of those frequencies. And that's what happened in this area. As you can see here, I got A here. On the other hand, I got the 67, which contained the whole thing here. And after that, the summation for those two roots is 131. After that, I'm left with those two values. And then I'm just going to build the tree, as you can see here. So at the end, basically, this is going to be added to this. And I'm going to have the frequency at the top, which is basically, in this case, uh, 234. And to the left, you're going to have the E. To the right, you're going to have the rest of the trees. Now, when you build the tree, after you're done with this process, and basically what I'm saying here, this mini heap will be empty. There will be no left, or you're just going to be one value, sorry, that contain the, the, the submission of all the frequencies. That's basically what's going to happen. You will take that, and we will build the tree just like you can see here. Remember here. All the leaves will contain the characters. That will be number one. All the internals, you don't care about the frequencies after this. As you can see here, there is no internals. They're gone. Again, they're not gone. They do have values here, but I don't care about those values anymore after I'm done with the whole process. Now, you need to build a table after you're done showing the simple and the code corresponding to that simple. And the way you do that is basically by moving from the root all the way to that character. And if you go look here, for example, how do I get to E from the root? Well, E is 0. How do I get to A? A is, again, you go to the right and you go to the left. So it's basically 1, 0. If I want to go to D, D is basically 1, 1, 0. And then if I want to B, it's 1, 1, 0. Zero, and if I want to get to C, it's basically one, 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 and I got C after that. But this is basically how we build a tree using this small table here. And of course, am I going to be this nice? No, I'm not. I'm going to give you a little bit more complicated cases, but this is just for demonstrations. Now, this is one of the um, topics that I will just give you a some good news, I will not actually ask you to um, build the Huffman tree in the final exam because this process takes time. But it's going to be one of the projects uh, in the second uh, topic, one of the topics in the second project. So, And it's easy one, which I recommend everybody to actually pick it if you want. Anyway, so why don't we just go with an example that will make it a lot easier um i do have a word document here open it's this is the text file that i was uh, talking about before now if you look at the text file i do have this text here at the top just focus on that right now and as you can see here i got a text called this is a test cs class you own casey what i did basically with this text i had all my characters and this i had a queue and every single uh, element in this pyrocure is basically a pair of two values. The first one will present the frequency of the appearance of that character and the character itself. So basically, K appeared 1, M appeared 1, and U appeared 1, A appeared 2, T appeared 3 times, and S appeared 6 times. Now, very, very important, it has to be organized in a prior queue. So as you can see here, the smallest values are... The smallest values always at the top, which is basically at the beginning of the queue, which is basically present the root of that prior queue. Now, all I'm going to do is basically to take those two first element out. And as you guys know from the prior queue, when you move the first element out, the last element, six, is going to replace that first element. And then after that, a few swap operations are going to be done until the prior queue gets to the regular order. Right after this operation, I got M to be the first element, and I took M out. After I took M and K out out of the prior queue, I basically mixed them together to perform, or sorry, to produce a binary tree. A binary tree that has a root, and the root itself uh, <coughs> uh, is the summation of those uh, frequencies, which basically is going to be one and one. And the left child is going to be K, and the right child is going to be M. Of course, if you want to flip them, there is no difference. But since I extracted K first, I'm going to make K left, and then M is going to be right. As a result of this operation, I will get a tree that will look like this. Now, before I do that, after you do that and create that tree, you basically have to put it back inside the prior queue. Now, when you put an element inside a prior queue, usually you put it at the end, and we talked about that, and then after that, your element has to find its 
right place inside the queue. So basically, your element's going to be moving, swapping with the parents, 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 and the guilt until it gets to the right position. Again, um, <clears throat> I am here not focusing on what is the right parent or the, the left child, the right child of all of them, because at a certain point, when you get, for example, 2A here and 2KM here, it doesn't matter actually if, if the K and M here or the A is here. So I'm just going to assume that this is the right place for it. Uh, the, when you're going to do it in a program, basically, you will get it to the right place. But for now, this is acceptable, just to, to for the demonstration purpose. 6 is going to get in the right place for it. This is going to be the first element in that uh, prior queue. And the new binary tree is going to be placed in this place here. OK. Now, after that, we're going to repeat the same thing, just like we did here with the 1K and 1M. We're going to apply it for the, those two second two elements. And I'm going to get another binary tree, which is basically 2UL. <clears throat> right after that, after you extract those two values, you produce the binary tree, you put it back in the prior queue, and then you do the same thing here again. E1 and H1, and basically I got the same thing again. 2H, uh, sorry, E and H, and you got two here. Now, this is my binary tree that I have so far. Now, I'm going to take the second two smallest values, which is basically 2A and 2KM. Right after I got those two values, immediately I mix them together into and create a new binary tree, and this is the binary tree. Now, just to give you an idea of what is this binary tree is going to look like, let me just go and open this file. This here is that binary tree. So as you can see here, I got the K and M, and the root for them is 2, and then I got A, added to that. So it's going to be 2 for the A and 2 for this binary tree, subtree. So I get 4 here. That'll be number 1. And this here is the E and H. And this here is the U and L. Now just remember, the placement of those trees, actually, I had to move them around a lot. Every time I try to find myself drawing something that doesn't really look like a binary tree, so I moved a lot of trees. So, but again, this is one of the branches or subtree, sorry, and this is another subtree, and this is another subtree. So I got those three subtrees inside that priority queue. Let's go back to the prior queue and see what do we have after that. So <clears throat> I mixed, where am I? Those two together, where is it? None of the two. I mixed those together, yes, the 2A and the 2KM, and I got four here, A2, A, and then 2K and 2M. Right after that, I got the second two elements, smallest elements, which is this subtree and this subtree. Now I'm going to mix them together, and I'm going to produce the four, which is 2UL and 2EH. Now let me just show you where is that in the binary tree. This is exactly the place. This is, this is if you want to imagine how the binary tree is going to look like, this is basically how it's going to look like. I'm taking those two and those two and put them together so I can get the root here to be four. Let's keep going then. After, oops, go down. <clears throat> After that, this is what the binary tree is going to look like. Where is it? Let me just go. Um, so I got this here, this here. Okay, here we go. Now, the second two smallest values is the I and the T. Now, remember again, C and T could be swa uh, swapped. So that that's basically telling you the way I may answer the question could be different than the way that you may answer the question. Still going to work with no problems. So let's get back here. I got 2, I, and 3, T. Put them all together. You got the fix, uh, fix 5, I, T. Now 5, I, T, if you go and look in that graph that I have, it's basically a separated tree. It's not connected to anything yet. Let's go back to the file. Right after that, I got the 5, I got the 4, and I got the 4. I got 3 here. So this is my prior to Q again. I got 3 and 4. Now I have to mix the 3 and the 4 here with the C. And as a result of that, I go, I'll get 7, summation of those two frequencies. So to the left, I will get C. To the right, I will get 4, which has two children, A to the left, and to the right, a subtree of 2K and 2M. Let me show you that in the graphic. And... We're talking about this one here. <clears throat> okay. Now let's keep going. 
Now I got four and five and six and seven. The smallest two values are four and five. You put them all together, you get the nine. And let me show you that in the tree. And this is the four that I was talking about. And this is the five that I was talking about. Now if you put them together, you get a bigger tree, which is basically the one with a root of nine. Now let's go back here. After I got the nine here, and I got the six here, and we got seven here. Now the two smallest values are six and seven. I'm just gonna jump here. Six and seven are gonna be mixed together or merged together to pr produce a bigger tree. The frequency is gonna be 13, and this is basically gonna how it's gonna look like. First, it's three, 13. It's gonna have a left child of C, and then it's gonna go to the right. It's gonna have a root of seven, and then to the left, you get C, to the right, you get four, and then to the left, you got A, to the right, you get two, and K and M. Let me just show you that, and remember, I'm talking about this here, and here it is. Oops, no, I don't want to take part of that T with it. So here we go, this is my tree. Now, from a look at it, I already got this tree here, and I got this tree. The only part left is basically to mix them both together. <clears throat> and that's what I have here. 9 and 13, you put them all together, you get a 23. And if you go to the tree itself, are you? this is basically how my binary tree is going to look like. Now, as I said before, whenever you get to this point, you don't care about the frequencies that you have here anymore. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make another copy of this file. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep this one. Let's save it. And I'm just going to call this one Orange. And now um, let's open the other one, which is not the Orange. Um, I still took my mouth, mouse, and uh, the pad is not really doing a good job. So let's go here and open this one. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Let's close this. <clears throat> I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to open the copy one. Okay. Let's reduce the size, the frequency, sorry, the resolution. And now let's start the process. What I'm going to do, basically, I'm going to take those frequencies because I don't care about them anymore. I don't care about them anymore. Oh, I care about the letters. My bad. I just the internals. We just have to keep the leaves. Take the internals away. Okay, just hope this is not boring, me spending all this time just trying to erase those. I'm not really good with video editing, even though I know I like to do that, but I'm really new to the whole thing. Okay, so I got all this away. Now, all I have to do now, and remember, this is a critical step that everybody needs to be aware of. You go to every single, you're going to scan this tree by yourself. and for all the right branches, you're going to draw a 1. And or for the left branches, you're going to have a 0. So you got 1 here, you got 0 here. You got 1 here. Uh, I wish I just typed it. It's a lot easier. And 1. So here we go. Left child, 0. Right child one, left child zero, right child one, zero, zero, and zero. And this is one, this is one, this is zero, and this is, oops, mistake. I just need to go check and make sure that I didn't make any mistakes somewhere else. Um, let's just go ahead and put this as one. And here we go. This is basically my binary tree. Now, what I need to do, I'm going to get a piece of 
paper and pencil, and I'm going to try to build my table, and then I'm going to post it in the Word document. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have all the characters listed here. I'm going to go E, H, U, L, I, T, S, C, A, K, and M. And for each one of those characters, you're just going to have to tell me, how did you reach to each one of those characters from the root? So for, for E, for, for example, I do have, let's go ahead here. <clears throat> um, what do I have here? I have 0, 0, 0, 0. So four zeros produce an E. Now H are three zeros and a 1. And now if I want to go to... The U, U is basically two zeros, one, and zero. So two zeros, one, and zero. And for the L, it's basically two zeros and one, two ones. Now let's go to the I. I is basically a zero, one, zero. And the T is zero, one, one. Now I want, to pay, I want you to pay attention here. The more frequency the letter the shorter the presentation is going to be. And if you go back to the table, you will notice that all the characters that I mentioned here, let's go all the way to the top. Um, the E, for example, E is one time. H is one time. U is one time. L is one time. Now when you go to I, I is two times. And T, uh, what is the other one? T is three times. And it happens. Okay, that's acceptable. I two times and three T times. T, uh, three times. Um, let's keep going. What do we have after that? We have the S. Now let's look at the S. S is basically one zero. And look at this. It's just two characters. How many times did we have S? We have six times. So that's the lo the, the more frequency the character is, the, the shorter it's going to be. Now C, which is basically, I think it's a three times character. Let's see, where's the C? Three times character. So if you can see, the C basically is going to be one, one, zero. And finally, uh, not finally, we're still there. A is one, 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 zero. And what else do we have? We have the K, which is uh, how many ones? One, two, three, four, four ones, and then one, zero. And finally, M is uh, five M's. One, two, three, four, five. And this is basically how my binary tree is going to look like for the Hoffman. Now, again, when I look at it implementation-wise, how am I supposed to do that if I have the whole alphabetic characters with digits and punctuations and all that kind of detail? Well, the good news is, this is why we don't use it manually. We have computers to do it for us. And if you're going to stick with the priority queue implementation, it will work. And by the way, right after I'm done with this, I do have a whole project implemented to demonstrate how it works. I'm going to go through that project, run it for you, and I'm going to go through the methods to explain how does it work. So um, let's just go ahead and go ahead and build the table. Now, if I go back here, and I, all I have to do is go here and create that table. Uh, how many characters do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So let's go ahead and create a table with two columns and eleven rows. And then let's just drag it all the way here. And uh, okay, so let's go ahead and put the characters. We got E, we got H, we got U, we got L. Of course, I have to go and change them to lower cases. We got I, we got T, we got S. We got C, we got A, we got K, and we got M. Okay, so let's try and do this again. E, H, U, L, I, T, S, C, A, K, and M. Um, I believe I will just wipe by one of those boards where I can draw. It will make it a lot easier. So this is going to be four zeros. There's going to be three zeros and one. There's going to be zero, zero, one, zero. And there's going to be zero, zero, one, one. There's going to be zero, one. There's going to be zero, one, one. 
it's going to be one zero, one one zero, one 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 zero, and then four ones, zero, and then after that, I will have um, five ones. Okay, so this is my table. Um, this is the whole thing that I just did basically called encoding, converting the strings into this binary code of ones and zeros for you with a variable length is here. Now the question is, what if I want to do the opposite? Well, the opposite is very simple. This is what you have to do. You basically, let's just, I'm going to ra randomly. Now this might not be totally correct, but let's just go ahead and, and see what do we have here. I got one, so you look for the ones here. This is one, and then I got zero, and I got zero here. And after that, I have one. Now the question is, do we have a code here that starts with 101? No, it's basically, it's the only match that I can think about here that matches is S. So this basically means I will have an S. Let me just highlight with color so you understand what's going on here. I'll go with letter screen. So I'll go with green here. Oh, no. I'm not supposed to do it that way. Let's just use this one here. Oh, that's not going to work too. Let's forget about colors. So again, remember, you start by checking the digit, which is 1. And you look here, where is 1? Well, I got a lot of 1s here, so it could be any of those. And then I look at the second digit, which is 0. So I look here, since this is the only one that has a second digit, so that's basically me. I got to the right place, that's an S. And I stop at this point. So I'm going to just... Uh, I'm just going to highlight that part. And right after that, I do the same thing. I got 1, and I got 0, so that's another S. So let's put an S here. Right after that, you go and check. What do I have here? I have 1, 1, and then 0, 0. So let's see here. What do we have? 1, 1, 0. So this is 1. This is 0, so it's not this one. This is 1, 1, and 0. So that's... That's basically what I'm looking for. And do I have a zero after that? No, it basically, the, the one with the fourth, it's going to be this one. So this is basically a C, the one, one, zero here. That's a C. So you put a C here. Um, <clears throat> what do we have after that? We have zero. So how many zeros do I have? I have four zeros. So you look here, where do we have four zeros here? Oh, here's the four zeros. This is the match. So do I have four zeros followed with one? No, that's not the case. So we will put an E here. Now let's highlight that. Right after that, you look, you got one zero, one zero, one zero again. So those immediately three S's. One, two, three. Let's highlight them. Right after that, I have zero, zero, one, so here it is. This is the match here, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 1. But it depends on what you have after that one. I do have here 0, 0, 1, wait a minute, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And that's a match with this one, which is U. So you put a U here. So let's highlight that part. Right after that, I have a 1, 0, 1. Oh, sorry. My bad. Zero one zero. So the only zero one zero is that one here. So I will stop at this part, highlight it, and what is the zero one zero? It's an I. So you put an I here, and then after that you have one zero zero, which basically it's we don't have one zero zero. We have one zero, and that's what an S again. <clears throat> Oh, I just remembered something. You know what kind of question I might ask you in the my final exam? I might give you the table, and I'm going to give you the digits, the zero binary number, and ask you what is the sentence that you can create out of this table. So this is a critical. This I I can I can see it right now. So that's why it's very important to understand what I'm doing exactly at this point. So let's see here. Go zero one zero again. Zero one zero is this one here. What the idea here, just in case you didn't notice, you scan your, your binary code from left to right, and as you scan it, you compare it with the table, trying to find a match. 
So zero basically means you're going to match with all these characters here, E all the way to T. After that, you fall with one. When you take one under consideration, you're basically eliminating all the ones that has two zeros. So basically now you are between I and T. Now, you can't decide because you have to see what is the third character to be able to tell. And since the third character is a zero here, that basically means I have an I. So let's go ahead and put this and replace this with an I. And let's go here. What do I have here? I have four ones, which basically this is a four one and this is six, right? Let me just see here. One, two, three, four, five. This is supposed to be five ones. My bad. So here we go. I got four ones followed with a zero. So that basically tells me this is a K. So I can put this as a K. And then after that, I have zero, zero, one, one. Zero, zero, one, one. Do I have zero, zero, one, one here? Yeah, that's it. It's an L. Right after that, I have one zero one, which basically doesn't exist, and that basically means well, you know, I I type those numbers randomly, so I better off do something different here. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put. Um, let me change this to be, which one of those characters we didn't have a chance to see here? Um, H. So let's just put H here, and H is basically zero 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 one. So this is it here, zero, zero, 001. Let me highlight it. And that's an H. Okay, now here we go. This is basically my uh, decoding of this binary uh, text here. I got those characters. Um, I'm going to stop at this point. And I'm going to start working on a new video where I'm going to show you how to use the files that we already have to run the code. And then I'm going to go through the functions themselves, try to explain, give you an idea about how do they work. Also, I'm going to go through the idea overall in the second video. Um, I'm going to stop at this point, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.